is here. Now broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here. We have breaking news, real breaking news. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, a.k.a. the American Stasi, the Department of Injustice, the Biden White House are in full cover-up mode, ladies and gentlemen. And here's the breaking news. New York Post. Pull it up here. The FBI has refused to give Congress an informant file alleging that President Biden took bribes while he was vice president, the Post has learned, setting up a possible showdown over access to the information. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer issued a legally binding subpoena last week requiring the FBI to turn over the file by noon today. But the FBI instead replied with a six-page letter raising various objections. Information from confidential human sources is unverified and by definition incomplete, wrote FBI Acting Assistant Director Christopher Durham, excuse me, Christopher Dunham, who also argued that informant reports must also be kept private to protect sources. Well, I would say this to the FBI... And to the frauds and the phonies that work there at the top levels. It's more important to know if our president is a crook. Or to at least expose him as the crook that he is. Than to worry about your damn sources and methods. Because so far, your sources and methods are to target President Trump and protect Joe Biden. We're well familiar with your sources and your methods. Screw your sources And screw your methods. The fact is, Joe Biden and his family are crooked. It is a crime family. They've been using his name to pour in millions and millions and millions of dollars. Not from allied countries, but from rogue genocidal nations. Communist China at the top of the list. The Bidens have accessed millions and millions of dollars. And as the Republicans said this morning, what exact business do they run for all this money that they received? What is it exactly causing these governments to give them money? Well, we know what it is. Joe Biden has been in Washington, D.C. his entire life. And he's a crook. He was in the Senate. Six terms. He was vice president two terms. And he finagled his way into the Oval Office, where he sits right now as putative president. The media have barely reported this story, America, because the media are in on it. They are the true American Pravda. The true arm. Mouthpiece other parts of the body, of the Democrat Party. 
What we learned today was extraordinary. We learned that a complex web to cover up the receipt of millions and millions of dollars, especially from the communist Chinese, was set up by the Biden family, and I assume the lawyers for the Biden family. Multiple LLCs. Now, LLCs are perfectly legal. The point of an LLC is to protect somebody's confidentiality. But the point of an LLC is not to create shell corporations to receive foreign money and to wash the money through the shell corporations to get into the hands of nine, count them, nine Biden family members, including three grandchildren who no doubt had nothing to do with this, but they were used as pawns. Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, Jim Biden's wife, Hunter Biden's wife, Hunter Biden's ex-wife. And there are more. They can account for approximately $10 million. Peter Schweitzer says, we're looking at $31 million. And everybody is wondering, what exactly, what exactly did the Joe Bidens do for this money? Why exactly would they be given this money other than the fact that they were buying access? And so the White House says today, you can't demonstrate that Joe Biden did a single thing for the money. And my response to the White House is, well, then make your client available for deposition and let's dig into what he did. And if he's an innocent man, given your tepid defense, he shouldn't have a problem with that. Now, should he? Well, separation of powers. But Joe doesn't care about separation of powers. Joe's been busy writing legislation with executive orders throughout the two years of his presidency. There is more evidence, more evidence of corruption in the Biden family than there was ever evidence, ever evidence of sexual battery by President Trump. Because there's no evidence whatsoever. And none was presented at that trial. None. Zero. But back to the crime family. The FBI does not have a right to stand between us and our knowledge about the President of the United States. The FBI is not even in the Constitution. The FBI does not have constitutional powers. The FBI is corrupt. And it has no right to stand between Congress and getting information. Getting information on Joe Biden. They say, well, the information is not reliable. No, the FBI is not reliable. We will leave it to Congress and the American people to determine what is or is not reliable. In the meantime, you use the FBI to get a warrant and conduct a SWAT team investigation of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago. Use the FBI to seize the iPhones of attorneys for President Trump. (coughs) You use the FBI to violate attorney-client privilege. Use the FBI to shake down witnesses. You've used the FBI against Paul Manafort and Roger Stone. You use your crazy-ass activist judges to do the same damn thing. And now you tell us sources and methods. They're worried about sources and methods. I am not. That FD-20, excuse me, 1023 form, we want to see it. The American people demand to see it. And the FBI and the Department of Justice, under the most corrupt attorney general in modern American history, all of American history, do not have the right to prevent us from seeing it. The cover-up must end. The cover-up must end. Bank records show the Biden family received $10 million of payments from China and foreign interests. 
the House Oversight Committee. Cut one. Go. We want to discuss information the committee has learned since our last press conference in November. New information investigators have uncovered regarding the transfer of money from foreign entities to the Biden family. Many of the wire payments occurred while Joe Biden was vice president and leading the United States efforts in these countries. First instance, while Vice President Biden was lecturing Romania on anti-corruption policies, in reality, he was a walking billboard for his son and family to collect money. Hunter Biden and his associates capitalized on a lucrative financial relationship with a Romanian national who was under investigation for and later convicted of corruption in Romania. The Bidens received over $1 million for the deal. And 16 of the 17 payments to their associates account that funneled the Biden's money occurred while Joe Biden was vice president. In fact, the money stops flowing from the Romanian national soon after Joe Biden leaves the vice presidency. So the this, question is right here and now, right here and now, to Joe Biden's White House lawyers. Why did the Romanians give a million dollars to your family? Simple question. Where's Maggot Haberman? Where's Jeremy and his Peters? Where's Philip and his bump? The great New York slimes that covered up the Holocaust. The great New York slimes that was the mouthpiece for Stalin. The great New York Times that prop, pro, uh, promoted Castro. Where are you? Where are you? You're nowhere. Bunch of frauds and phonies. Go ahead. Pattern of influence peddling. This appears separate from any payment Hunter received from his work connecting this individual to a U.S. law firm. What explains it? Million dollars for what? Wow. Wonder what George Conway thinks about this. What do you think about it, George? More, cut two, go. They also couldn't explain why the Bidens received over $1 million in 16 different wire transfers over a period of three months to at least five different banks. Stop. $1 million in 16 different wire transfers over a period of three months to at least five different banks. Do you know why they did it that way, Mr. Producer? To try and conceal the size of the payoff. Otherwise, there's no need to do this. 16 different wire transfers for a million dollars over a three-month period with five different banks. Why not just a million dollars in one wire transfer to one bank? Because the flags, the pots and pans, the alarms, they all would have been banging and going off. That's why. Go. The president, when confronted with this information, said it wasn't true. Instead of being with, honest with the American people, President now Biden... Now we know is, it's true. These are the actual records. So Biden says the actual records are false. But the actual records are true. Go ahead. It's a 2020 election that his family has not received money from China. That was a lie in 2020, and he continues to lie to the American people now. The Bidens have received millions of dollars from China. It is inconceivable that the president did not know it. The White House refuses to correct the president's statements, showing the president is now using the federal government to run interference for his families and his own role in these schemes. Now you know why the Biden administration has unleashed a special counsel against Donald Trump. 
Now you know why the Democrat Party has unleashed two district attorneys against Donald Trump. Because they know Joe Biden has a problem. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Now, I know you guys are worried. Federal Reserve staff said banking crises fallout could push the economy into recession this year. But you can do something about that. Learn how to protect the retirement you worked really hard for. I think a great way is to diversify with gold and specifically a gold IRA. That's right. Physical gold in your IRA. My favorite gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals. You got to call these guys and learn how a gold IRA can help you. So if you've saved 100000 or more in a 401k or an IRA, call Augusta Precious Metals and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Tell them Mark sent you, and they'll give you a free gold coin when you open a gold IRA. Call Augusta Precious Metals today, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. That's 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions. Get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. What a great company. First of all, I would say to Biden's flunky lawyer, this committee doesn't have to prove a damn thing. This is not a grand jury. It's not a jury. This is not the Department of Injustice. It's not the Federal Bureau of the Stasi. It's a committee of Congress. They have subpoena power, but they can only go so far. The January 6th committee was in business a long time. Had enormous resources. They didn't prove a damn thing. Fact of the matter is, the information that came out today is... Incredibly critical. Very, very important. And obviously Biden cannot answer the questions, and his lawyers cannot answer the questions, why they set up all these LLCs to conceal the receipt of money from the communist Chinese, the Romanians, and others. They cannot explain the wire transfers both the aggregate amount and why they were broken up into pieces and why they wound up in multiple bank accounts. They cannot explain why nine members of the Biden family, including three grandchildren, who we know didn't do actual work for the communist Chinese, why they all received a piece piece of the action. This is a republic where the President of the United States is to explain his activities And his family's activities. This isn't some phony judge in a phony courtroom in Manhattan. Biden needs to explain what took place here. And all he says is it didn't happen. Well, it did happen. And why did it happen, Joe? And get your lawyers out of the way and answer the American people. I'll be right back. Now, I know you guys are worried. Federal Reserve staff said banking crises fallout could push the economy into recession this year. But you can do something about that. Learn how to protect the retirement you worked really hard for. I think a great way is to diversify with gold and specifically a gold IRA. That's right, physical gold in your IRA. My favorite gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals. You got to call these guys and learn how a gold IRA can help you. So if you've saved 100000 or more in a 401k or an IRA, call Augusta Precious Metals and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Tell them Mark sent you, and they'll give you a free gold coin when you open a gold IRA. Call Augusta Precious Metals today, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. That's 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions. Get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. What a great company. Conservative and proud of it. Call the Mark Levin Show at 877-381-3811. Just to repeat so the idiot leftists can understand this, 
because I know they, they find these things very complicated. This committee doesn't have to prove causation. The president has to explain himself. The president has to explain himself. We don't need to hear from a White House lawyer. We don't need to hear from a slip and fall, ambulance chasing Democrat thug lawyer who gets paid to lie through his teeth, all six of them. There's been information laid on the table that is very troubling. Biden didn't lay it on the table himself. It was laid on the table for him. Now what happened? All he has to do is explain it. Why did three of your ch- grandchildren why did three of your grandchildren receive payments from the Communist Chinese? It seems like a rational question. Why did your brother receive payments from the Communist Chinese? Why did your sister-in-law get payments from the Communist Chinese? Why did your your son Bo's wife receive payments from the Communist Chinese? Why did Hunter's ex-wife get payments from the Communist Chinese? Why did Hunter's current wife get payments from the Communist Chinese? Why did Hunter get payments from the Communist Chinese? Well, you can't prove that Joe did anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's your answer? That's your answer? Well, we all know we're not stupid. We're Americans. We all know why the communist Chinese, the Romanian government, the crooked Ukrainian government before Zelensky, all these regimes, we know why they gave money to the Biden family. They were by influence. There's no other explanation. None. That's why the lawyer today for Biden at the White House says they can't prove Biden did anything for the communist Chinese. Now, in order to make a determination if Biden did anything for the communist Chinese, Biden needs to voluntarily submit himself for a sworn deposition. Now, if we had a serious, legitimate, law-abiding Department of Justice, we'd have a special counsel, we'd have a special grand jury, and they would require Biden to answer at least written questions with the help of his lawyers about these activities. So when the same lawyers that do not want a special counsel then demand evidence of causation, that's pretty snick, uh, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty clever trick. It ain't going to fly here. On the one hand, you obstruct, and then on the other hand, you want evidence. One hand, they obstruct. The other hand, they're saying, prove it. And the Department of Justice is a thoroughly corrupt enterprise, ladies and gentlemen. It works for the Democrat Party. It's that simple. Defends the unions, goes after the parents. Goes after the pro-lifers. Goes after some protesters and then seeks lenient. Here we have the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., You've got two lawyers in New York during the riots who throw Molotov cocktails into a a police vehicle. Luckily, the police weren't in there. They seek light sentences for them. Light sentences. Actually, no sentences. And then we have these middle-class Men, some women, come out of Texas, out of California, out of West Virginia. Some are vets, some are cop, whatever. And they throw the book at them for January 6th. Even the ones that were not violent. By reading, reading their social media sites. By convincing Democrat juries and lousy, rotten judges 
that they're involved in conspiracies to overthrow the government of the United States. Unbelievable. While the Democrat Party is overthrowing it every damn day. So we now have a man in the Oval Office who will not explain why all these LLCs, all these LLC companies, just understand all that means is companies that do not have to reveal who owns them. All these secret companies, all these wire transfers of huge amounts of money, millions, totaling millions from the communist Chinese and others, going into these secret companies in order to keep secret the identity of Biden family members. Nine family members. And Joe doesn't know anything about it. Nobody ever told him. Now Joe has meetings with Hunter constantly. Some of them either right before or right after he has meetings with some of these these individuals who send the money. Those are important questions that any special counsel would want to ask Joe Joe about. Special counsel would want to know why you're setting up all these LLCs, why you why you the people who sent you money broke these large sums into smaller sums, why they paid it over a period of a few months rather than all at once. Why they paid it into five banks rather than one bank? These are legitimate questions. And so Joe Biden's lawyer says today, prove it. Prove we did anything wrong. What? Well, if we had a special counsel, that would be his job. Now, we don't want a special counsel. We don't want a grand jury. Well, Congress does not have the capability of getting an answer to that question. Especially if you're good at covering your tracks. So this is the game the lawyers play in the White House under Joe Biden. This is the game the media will play. Oh, it's just the Republicans. If the Democrats came out with this on Donald Trump, it'd be game over. Game over. As it is, they got to search for this and look for that. And get people's phones and... Shake down the lawyers and witnesses and this, that, and the other. That case in New York the other day, there wasn't a shred of evidence. Not one piece. I was thinking about this the other night. There wasn't a piece of evidence, not one, presented in that trial. None whatsoever. And most of the information that was provided was outrageously prejudicial. And there's Mika Brzezinski. She's all upset. And that dumb slob husband of hers. Unbelievable. And that fat slob, uh, the Hindenburg Christie. We're going to try and get him on the show again. He's everywhere else. Goes on Hugh Hewitt's show. He goes on Brian Kilmeade. Come on a show where you're going to be grilled. Where you're going to be grilled. Come on a show, Mr. Tough Guy, where you're going to be grilled. You can come on this show and call me names. You can come on this show and say you don't like me. You can come on this show and say you don't like the way I I talk about you. Do it! But I want to get into the issues with you, pal. Coward. Coward. Mr. Tough Guy. Another coward. And so the FBI announces today to the Republican committee... No, no, you don't get this form 1023. No, no, no. This whistleblower of yours may not be reliable. The information may not be. Excuse me. This FBI has had the Hunter laptop and has done nothing. They talked to Bob Alinsky for four or five hours, never followed up. Never. They have this form 1023 about Biden and his corruption. Oh, it might not be accurate. You trust this FBI, folks? The FBI that had Comey at the top, that had McCabe, that had, what's the guy's name, Peter, what's his name? Strode? Struck and his girlfriend? 
had the lawyer who falsified a FOIA application? You trust this FBI? And the phony dossier that they used to try and take Trump out? Is this a joke? Sorry, we need to protect our sources and our and our methods. Screw your sources and methods. They're corrupt. We, the American people, have every damn right to know about this, this president, the cover-up, and the cover-up includes the very FBI that doesn't want to release the information. And let me tell you something. You know who the Svengali at the Department of Justice is behind all of this? It's the Deputy Attorney General. She's an Obama hack. She's a radical Marxist activist. They're all over that damn department, by the way. Especially at the highest levels. But she's the one. Because it looks to me like Meritless Garland has a bit of Mueller going on there. Just one man's opinion. Can you prove it, Mark? Yes, I can. I need a neurologist, and I'll prove it. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Now, I know you guys are worried. Federal Reserve staff said banking crises fall out could push the economy into recession this year. But you can do something about that. Learn how to protect the retirement you worked really hard for. I think a great way is to diversify with gold and specifically a gold IRA. That's right, physical gold in your IRA. My favorite gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals. You got to call these guys and learn how a gold IRA can help you. So if you've saved 100000 or more in a 401k or an IRA, Call Augusta Precious Metals and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Tell them Mark sent you, and they'll give you a free gold coin when you open a gold IRA. Call Augusta Precious Metals today, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. That's 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions. Get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. What a great company. America's Governor Ron DeSantis will be on the program Thursday. Supposed to be on last Friday, but I had a little uh, reaction from an eye procedure, so we couldn't do it, but we will do it this week. James Comer on the FBI cover-up. Cut three, go! The committee has reviewed thousands of bank records from individuals and companies affiliated with the Bidens and their associates. It has received these bank records pursuant to four subpoenas I've issued to different banks. These were targeted and specific subpoenas, and each was different based on the information we believed the banks possessed. Every one of those subpoenas returned valuable information that had been unreported and that contributed to this committee's understanding of how the Bidens conducted their businesses. The committee is concerned by the complicated suspicious network of over 20 companies we have identified the Bidens and their associates used to enrich themselves. Most of these companies were limited liability companies formed during Joe Biden's vice presidency. The bank records show the Biden family, their associates... Stop, stop. Why would you need 20 limited liability companies? Who the hell has 20 limited liability companies? Raise your hand. I asked a question, FBI. Why do you need 20 limited liability companies? Why do you need scores of banks? Why are wire payments of huge funds coming from the communist Chinese to people named Biden? What the hell do you need to open a special counsel investigation? Oh, I know. We'll call Joe Biden Trump. Then they'll do it. Go. Companies received over $10 million from foreign nationals and their companies. $10 million. $10 million. Now, the Biden administration and the Democrats have set up a, a scheme that 
that may catch all of you. If over the course of a year, you receive or send an accumulated total of $600 via PayPal or Venmo or one of those operations, you're going to get a tax form, and you're going to have to pay taxes. And they're going to come down on your head like a ton of bricks if you don't. But Joe Biden, $10 million into the Biden family. Let me tell you something. You parents and grandparents out there, but particularly you parents out there. Let's say you have a son, you have three grandkids, you have a daughter-in-law, an ex-daughter-in-law, you've got the the wife of your your deceased son, you've got your brother, and $10 million have come into them. And you're president of the United States. Excuse me. Vice President of the United States. I, I don't I don't know anything. What? No, I, I, I don't know anything. I'm proud of my son. I'm proud of the hookers he hired, I'm proud of the drugs he took, I'm proud of the the gun application he falsified. Oh yes. You ought to see his paintings. Absolutely unbelievable. I'm proud of my son. He didn't do anything wrong. He's sending a message, you see, to Meritless Garland. I want to ask my former friends at the Department of Justice, notice I said former friends. I want to ask the prosecutors in the criminal division, specifically the public integrity section. You happy with this? You happy with this? That you look like a bunch of clowns? A bunch of sycophants, a bunch of lapdogs for sitting on your asses while this is going on? I want to ask the people at the FBI, the senior people, not Chris Ray. Chris Ray always looks like he's constipated to me. Or the opposite, that he has the runs. He always looks stupid, stupid. He looks like Biden. So anyway, I want to ask the senior FBI folks. You proud of what's going on here? Proud of it? Where are the SWAT teams to seize financial records from members of the Biden family? Huh? Any judge out there want to explain that to me? Well, when are they going to use SWAT teams against the Democrats? They use SWAT teams when it comes to his documents. No SWAT teams when it comes to... $10 $10 million, no SWAT teams when it comes to bank records. Where's our FBI SWAT teams? I mean, you got all the cool jackets and all the weapons. What's that all about? All right, I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. How you doing? That's South Philly. Hello, America. Mark Levin. Our numbers. Well, you know the number. I want to take a brief moment to tell you about an organization that doesn't get the kind of attention it deserves. It's an organization that supports the young men and women who come out of high school and join voluntarily the United States military, even now. Under very difficult circumstances, given the commander-in-chief in this administration. It's called Our Community Salutes. And it really is the only organization in the country that honors those who are going to volunteer to go into the military as a career. And they go around the country and they have these various events where they honor them. An honor guard comes out, veterans come out, people you know in various parts of the country come out to say thank you. 
Um, it's not done enough. And the Lord knows we need these people, these young people. They are young people who believe in the country, who love the country. And I want you to check out their website at ourcommunitysalutes.org. Ourcommunitysalutes.org. Just check them out. These are brave and patriotic young people. Less than, much less than 1% of high school graduates are joining the military. And so we ought to at least thank those who do, don't you think? And they have there, when you go to their website, if you scroll down a little bit, they have um, a card that you can sign online, electronically, put your name to it, to thank them. Now, my wife serves on the board of directors of this organ, this fantastic organization, and they had a uh, meeting in New Jersey last night, and as I say, they had these events, if they raise enough money throughout the country for these young people just graduating from, from high school. And she said she sat at her table with a gold star parent that is a parent who lost a child in the military. Uh, there was a 100-year-old World War II veteran who'd been imprisoned by the Nazis for a period of time. There was a woman who was going to turn today 99 years old who had served in the Air Force in World War II. So these folks honor these young kids who are coming out of high school to join the services to protect us. Even knowing what they're going to face, the wokeism and all the rest. So I hope you'll check out the website. I hope you'll check it out. It's a beautiful organization, ourcommunitysalutes.org. And um, just give a quick thank you to the young people who deserve to be saluted. You, you can scroll down for the thank you card. Um, and it means a lot to them. And the organization will share it with them. Also, we're linking to their website on all my social platforms um, to make it easy for you to do just that. So let's flood the zone, as we say. All the Levinites, all you patriots, it takes us 30 seconds. If you'll just go to that website and uh, check out that thank you card. I mean, that's all we're doing. They're doing the heavy lifting right now. And they're going against the flow. They're going against the tide. Uh because a smaller and smaller percentage of young people are joining voluntarily the military. And when you see what's happening in this world, we desperately need them. And these are really terrific young guys and gals. Terrific kids, they really are. I'm not getting off this subject yet with the corruption Joe Biden family. You know, I'm getting a little frustrated with Republican prosecutors around the country. I've said on this microphone, I've said on my Fox show, I've said on Levin TV, anybody who can hear me, I've said on Hannity's show, I've said on Fox and Friends, I've said everywhere. You Republican prosecutors, your DAs, they're serving a DA's office or in an attorney general's office, where the hell are you? Have you been looking at your your local statutes and codes? I mean, this guy, Hunter Biden, he hires prostitutes. Does he just do it at Washington, D.C.? No. He's got drug issues. He's got tax issues. Did he pay his state income taxes in states that have income taxes? What about the old man? I mean, why is it? That our people are always investigated and prosecuted by Democrat prosecutors, by Soros-backed prosecutors. Where are our guys? Where the hell are they? I'm not kidding. The only way this will stop 
The only way this will stop if this is done to Democrats as well. I'm just telling you the truth. And I don't give a damn what media matters and mediocreite and all the other frauds, phonies, and fools have to say. It means nothing to me. They're the enemy. They're the Pravda. But where is, where are guys? So they don't have uh, resources? Well, you know, Mark, you can't indict a sitting president. I tend to agree with that, but has that ever been demonstrated anywhere? No. Has the Supreme Court ever made a decision on that? No. So push the edge of the envelope, just like they do with us. Hell, they indicted Donald Trump when he left office. Indicted. They impeached Donald Trump when he left office, for crying out loud. How many times has that been done to a president? Never. The only way this is going to stop is if we act. We can't keep moaning and groaning and whining about it. These guys come, they want to get elected. Most of these DAs are elected. Most of these attorneys general are elected. You want my vote? Get off your fat ass and do something. Well, I'll come into criticism. I'd rather... That's how they behave. The other side, you know, they're Dobermans. They're Dobermans. They're ready to go. Just whistle and they're off to the races. All right, Jim Jordan at the press conference today. And just a reminder, people come and go. The Bidens set up approximately 20 LLC corporations, limited liability corporations, to conceal the money flow coming in to them and who would receive it. Nine different Biden family members have received money from the communist Chinese and the Romanians, among others, including three grandchildren. So you know what they did there. They used the three grandchildren's names and setting it up, which is horrendous. But when you consider that Hunter Biden won't even recognize his daughter, then you know what we're dealing with here. Joe Biden still does his rope-a-dope, still plays the homeless guy roaming on the street, but wants to be your president. And of course, the Federal Bureau of the Stasi uh, we got, we, we, we have to protect our sources and methods, so we can't let you know if the President of the United States was on the take or not. Excuse me? Who the hell do you think you are? We're the, we're the, we're the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have to protect our sources and methods. No, you don't. We have to protect our country. We, the people, have a right to know what's on that damn form. And where's the special counsel, Garland? Where the hell is it? If they don't have a special counsel for this, why do you have special counsel for other things? The hell's it going to take? And then there's the media. Eh, eh. Are you, are you going to be investigating uh, Donald Trump, too, in the... Uh... Oh, no, Donald Trump's never been investigated. Don't you know that, you clown? Oh, yeah, yeah, Donald Trump. You know, he, he gets away with everything. They never investigate Donald Trump. The DAs, the state attorneys general, the federal uh, prosecutor. No, Donald Trump's never investigated. That's one of the questions from one of the bubbleheads. Uh, are you going to investigate the uh, Trump's... Uh, no, of course not. They're already under investigation, you jackass. What? Here's Jim Jordan today. Cut four. Go. Again, the fundamental question is, what did they do to warrant the receipt of millions and millions of dollars? Why did, why did Joe Biden's brother, why did Joe Biden's sister-in-law, why did Joe Biden's son, why did so many family members get the money? What did they do to, re- to warrant receipt of that money? That's the fundamental question. No, the fundamental question, Jim Jordan, is, is Joe Scarborough going to cover this tomorrow? So his 17-member audience will actually know what's going on? What do you say, Joe? You think you'll look into this? You think you'll even talk about it? Huh? You know, Mika, with that dumb... 
you, 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 you know me, yeah? The Republicans, there they go. They're just nuts. You know, you know what I mean, Mickey? Yes, I do. Hello. Yes, I do. Well, you know, Mika, they don't have any evidence of criminality. Just because Joe set up, excuse me, the Biden set up 20 LLCs and used multiple banks and broke the money down and sent it at different times, including to the grandkids. That doesn't prove anything, Mika. Joe, you're so right. Joe, you're so right. And I've ever told you, Joe, in the right light, you look like, well, a little bit like Wayne Gacy. Have I ever told you that? I'm not saying you are. Uh, Anyway, let's continue. Cut five, go. You said that there's a legislative purpose to what you're doing here and that you want to ensure that uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anyone sitting in the uh-huh. highest office or the family doesn't benefit uh-huh. from uh, these kinds of financial advances. Uh-huh. Uh, former President Donald Trump is running for president Ooh. again. Uh, he has, uh, him and his family have benefited while he was in office, since leaving office, from a number of countries. Are you investigating those business feelings as oh, well? Oh, yes, 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 we certainly are. I must tell you that Donald Trump. Uh, Needs to be investigated yet again. That's right. That's right. Donald Trump is running for office, she says. Isn't that clever? Who's president of the United States? Mr. Producer, do you know who the president is? Raise your hand, everybody. It's Joe Biden, right? Why don't you talk about Joe Biden, reporter? He's the one right now serving as president of the United States. That's who they're investigating. When the Democrats are in, they investigated Trump. Now it's Biden. And not a thing that this committee has come up with, a thing that Comer and the others said, even tweaks your curiosity. Because you're a fraud. And that's why people detest you. Oh, yes, they do. That's why people detest you. Because your answer to everything is, what about Donald Trump? Hey, what about Donald Trump? Now Biden, hey, but what about Trump? What about it? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. Well, the backbenchers are alive and well, as you know, folks. You listen to this program. I've said on mo- multiple occasions that there are several key reasons why the border is open under Joe Biden. And you'll notice he's never articulated a single one other than it's Trump's fault. Or send me a bill, comprehensive immigration reform. And I already orally stated one here, which is take all the Trump policies and put them back in place. There you go. We have a plan. But they don't mean any of that. That's all phony. You don't have to have so-called comprehensive immigration reform or any of the rest of it to secure the border. One has absolutely nothing to do with the other. So why is Biden doing this? Well, you can't say that it's because... Well, this white dominant society has been around too long. 
so it's time to end it. I'm thinking to myself, they keep attacking a white, dominant, white, privileged society. They're trying to brainwash our children to this effect with critical race theory. It's endlessly regurgitated on television, in our colleges and universities. We're constantly told that the European Caucasians, the Caucasoids, conquered lands that didn't belong to them, that the indigenous peoples are... Well, they can't make up their mind. They don't know if they're Native Americans, that is, Indians or Central Americans or South Americans or or the Spanish. or They don't know, but they just know it's not white Caucasoids from Europe. And so what better way to, to, to reverse history than to have the border open? Oh, you must be a white supremacist. You must be a white supremacist with this replacement theory. Replacement theory? Um, Schmuck Schumer the other month, he even said, we're not having enough children in this country, so we need more people to come here from other countries. He said it. Nobody attacks him for replacement theory. He's not a white supremacist. No, 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 not Chuck. And, of course, we have a guy who actually was in the Oval Office. Joe Biden was a segregationist. He's the only one. But no, 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 you know, it's Republicans. Republicans who never supported slavery. Republicans who never supported segregation. Republicans who never supported Jim Crow. It's the Republicans who are the white supremacists. You mind, you got to understand this. Oh, I'm so confused. But as I've said, and that the backbenchers are repeating, that clearly is the case, but the bigger case is they want to flip Texas. This is my point. It is my constant point. I will keep repeating it, no matter what names they fling around. If Texas goes, Republicans cannot win. And as a matter of fact, the more immigration that is coming into the country by way of Texas and Arizona, you can now see that Arizona is a purple leaning blue state and Texas. Republicans are having tougher times winning that state. So it's not like it's, it's a fantasy or, or, or a provocative statement. It's reality. I'll be right back. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code LEVINPODCAST, L-E-V-I-N PODCAST, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. Mark Levin, radio's principal patriot. Call in now at 877-381-3811. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you might remember Hank Johnson. He is a certifiable moron. Wasn't this the guy that worried about... uh, Guam or something sinking, Mr. Producer? And so the people of that district are so impressed with their congressman, they keep electing him. And uh, he's back. He's at a hearing today. And it's not enough that we have four or five million new foreigners in the country over the two years of the Biden administration. What's the problem? 
We're a nation of immigrants, ladies and gentlemen. No, we're not. We're a nation of citizens. Nations are made up of citizens. That's what makes up nations. Not illegal aliens. But here's Hank. Cut nine, go. People come here and they are always subject to being illegal workers. Um, oh, I'm sorry. To- I'm sorry. So people come here illegally and they're subject to being illegal workers. I do apologize. Um, but they came here illegally. Are they supposed to be legal workers? What am I missing here? Go ahead. About that in this country, those folk who are coming across are the ones who are helping to put food on our table. Without them, we're not able to eat. All right, I'll hold, you... hold, hold, hold on a second. I go to a lot of places where people speak perfect English, even if they're not from here. I assume they're not illegal aliens for the most part. But we wouldn't be able to eat without millions of more. I feel like we're the ones feeding the illegal aliens. I'm watching Democrat city mayors complain. Where are we going to put all these people? How are we going to feed all these people? So, in other words, I can't eat and you can't eat if the border's not open and millions of people come across every single year? Does that seem a little counterintuitive? That's a line they've been using for 50 years. By now, you would think we have enough people who can pick lettuce. That's their other line. Who's going to pick the lettuce? We will. We will. If you look at Liberty and Tyranny, which goes back several years, I break out the review of who's doing what. You know who picks the lettuce? Americans. You know who picks the peaches? Americans. You know who the waiters and waitresses are, for the most part? Americans. You know who mostly washes the dishes? Americans. Just, just thought I'd point that out. I don't know what's going on on Capitol Hill or in his district. But here's a guy who says, we won't be able to eat. We won't be able to put food on our table. Now, these Democrats say this all the time. So they want the border open so illegal aliens can come into the country and replace, I guess, American workers? Union members who they claim to defend and support? What's that all about? It doesn't make any sense. We've got the EPA and the Energy Department, strange names for those entities, who want us to use less water. They say we're running out of water. So why are we letting 5 million people in in two years? Well, you know, whatever. We wouldn't have water but for illegal aliens. What the hell are you talking about? got to use less energy but we're going to let 5 million people in in 2 years oh okay we have food shortages but don't worry we're going to let 5 million people in and and you citizens who can't get baby formula don't worry we're just letting 5 million people in no problem go ahead turn them away if if all of them were uh, turned away and then you, this legislation passed, making it easier to get at people who are already here oh legally, and you have no immigration, then we would have no food on our plates. We would have no, nobody taking care of uh, the building, the construction of our uh, homes. We would have nobody cleaning up in the hospitals. Uh, yeah, these you know. Americans are lazy bastards. That's right. Americans don't build homes, they don't, they don't cut lawns, they don't grow food, they don't work at hospitals. No, 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 no. But people from other countries, they're more than willing to do that. That's right. 
None of them are on welfare. None of them are on Social Security. None of them get food stamps. No, they're all hardworking, industrious people. It's the Americans who suck. We build this great country. And they act like we haven't. But I would have fired back at this guy. Millions of people come into this country. Why are they coming to this country? Why are they coming to America? Why are they coming to a racist, white dominant, white privileged hellhole that practices capitalism? That loads up its prisons with people of color? That six its police forces on minorities. Why would they come to such a hellhole? By the millions. And if they could, the tens of millions. Why would they come to this country? It's inexplicable. Conversely, why do those who think this is such a horrendous country, such a irredeemably evil country with evil people why do they stay here you don't need a visa or a passport to leave just get off your ass and walk across the border into the paradise that they call Mexico because they're frauds that's why because they know they'll never live the kind of life they live in the United States anywhere else on the face of the earth that's, that explains why people, including people of color, want to come into the United States. And people who claim the United States is horrendous won't leave the United States. But what explains Hank Johnson? I think just stupidity. Just stupidity. Said a long time ago, stupid people have a right to be represented too, you know. That explains Chuck Schumer. This guy, Jamie Raskin, explains a lot of things. Now we have Rashida Talib, humanitarian, except if you're a Jew. Not so hot on Jews. Other than that, she's great. I know this because Joe Biden met her, I think, on the tarmac somewhere and told her, told her she's doing a great job after she had been spewing her her vial for a while. Oh, yeah. She's, she's fantastic. She replaced John Conyers. I miss John Conyers now. I'd rather have him than this. She was there, too. Cut 10, go. No human being is illegal. I believe that in my heart. I will continue to fight to make sure that we pass some sort of form of comprehensive immigration reform that gives our immigrant neighbors the dignified pathway, legal pathway, to citizenship they deserve. See, that's the whole point. People are coming here illegally from all walks of life. Some of them are illiterate in their own language. They want to get them citizenship as fast as possible and get them to vote. Now, these Democrats say it. But then if you mention it, oh, what, are you, what are you, a Klansman? What's wrong? I don't know. Is, is Talib a Klansman? Is she a neo-Nazi? I mean, other than being an anti-Semite, is she? Is Chuck Schumer? He said that. Because it's obvious what's going on here. Mr. Shuffles there, Joe Biden, he won't explain it to the American people because he dare not. He dare not. What is the point of immigration? We've talked about this before. I've written about it extensively. I've talked about it for 20 years. What is the point? The point of immigration is to improve the society for the citizenry. Not the foreigner. Not the Democrats. Our representatives are supposed to represent we the people, we the citizens. Immigration doesn't exist for every other country. It exists for us. And this stuff about who's going to clean and feed us and all that, we don't need to hear that anymore. We are 
cleaning, feeding, clothing, medicating the people who are coming in here illegally. We, the American people, we, the American citizen, we, the people, we're the ones doing it. Not the people crossing the border, you jerk. What a jerk. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. America's Governor Ron DeSantis will be on this program Thursday. He was at a press conference he held today. Cut 11, go. Immigration, legal immigration, nobody has a right to immigrate to this country, no foreigner. We determine as Americans what Amen. type of immigration system benefits our country. But when you're doing immigration, it's not for their benefit as foreigners. It's for your benefit as Americans. Now, stop. So if there's legal. Other than me, nobody has said this as clearly. Period. We've got this upside down. The governor is 100 percent right. Have you heard another politician talk like that? No, you haven't. Go ahead. That's harming Americans. We shouldn't do that either. For example, some of these H-1B visas, they would fire American tech workers and hire foreigners at lower wages. I don't agree with that. I think that's wrong. Uh, there's other things that are, that are value added. Uh, so you've got to look at how that is. But once you determine, I think we should have more of a, of a point system like Canada or Australia Uh, I don't think we should have chain migration, diversity lottery, any of that, which is a lot of our immigration here. Um, Then you then you can do. But uh, you you got a long way to go to be able uh, to get there. But it starts with uh, stopping the border influx. Uh, I do think that um, with a border that big, you need a physical wall. You can't just do it with personnel surveilling. There's too many gaps. So you do that wall, construct that wall then that'll make it more easy for you to follow the pressure points and repel people from back there. You know, it's one thing to have a governor who talks about this issue. There's another thing to have a governor who talks about it and understands it. I'm just telling you, this guy's a cut above. Cut 12, go. The bill also prohibits county governments and NGOs from using tax dollars to provide IDs for illegal aliens it invalidates out-of-state licenses issued to illegal aliens, and it makes it a felony for illegal aliens to use a fake ID to gain employment. We don't have in Florida, and we shouldn't have, driver's licenses for illegal aliens. A lot of people in, across the country who want open borders, they want driver's licenses, and you have it, in, I think, in California and a number of these other states. Uh, we've never done that. But what happens is you have some of these local governments They're actually working with private groups to generate ID cards to be able to be used as if that makes you legal to be here. So we're not going to recognize that. We're also not going to recognize a a, a driver's license from California that was issued to somebody here illegally or these other states. And so we're making sure that in Florida we're doing it legal. I have to be honest with you that this is why I love the state of Florida. I love the weather. I love the ocean, but I love the governor. Am I allowed to do that, Mr. Producer? Well, you understand what I mean. They are on offense. 
They're constantly pushing back against the corrupt culture. They're constantly pushing back against the mob media. They're constantly pushing back against the Marxist Democrats. And they're using what all of us used to believe was common sense. Even Democrats used to believe this is common sense. And I bet there are people listening to me now in these dark blue states, some of whom are Democrats thinking, oh my God, I wish I had a governor like this. He's saying, no, we're not going to do this license driver thing in these states. And you know, 10 years ago it was unheard of. This is also why on MSNBC, half the time they're trashing DeSantis, half the time they're trashing Trump. They don't care about the other candidates. Or they even bring them on. They'll bring on the Hindenburg. They'll bring on the sugar high guy. They'll bring these Asa on. They'll bring on all these lame rhinos because that's perfectly fine. They're not going to move the needle at all. I just point that out. It's a big deal. It's very important. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. Our number is 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. I do not hear when you're giving me signals about things. So um, there is that. You know, as I sit here and think about the Biden stuff during the break, do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that the New York Post has done more to dig in to the corruption of the Biden family than the massive Federal Bureau of Investigation, than the even more massive Department of Justice, that the New York Post has done more to go through that laptop, the same laptop the Biden administration now possesses. The same laptop the FBI and the Department of Justice possess. That they've done more, the New York Post, to go through it than anybody else? Do you realize that this committee, which has been in existence in Republican hands for, oh what, two and a half months, give or take, has done more to dig into the Biden family's receipt of foreign monies, including from our enemy, the Communist Chinese, that the Biden administration, Department of Justice, and the Biden administration, FBI, do you realize this committee, with a minuscule staff, in a very short period of time, has done more to track the wire transfers? And they've just started because they were delayed getting them from the Treasury Department and from banks. They've done more to track these wire transfers and the flow of money than the Treasury Department, Department of Justice, and the FBI. Do you realize this committee's done more to expose which family members have received money from foreign entities? including the Communist Chinese, then the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the Treasury Department? That this committee's done more to determine which banks were used by the Bidens, than the Treasury Department, the FBI, or the Department of Justice, all of which report to Joe Biden. this committee was contacted by an FBI whistleblower who said there's a form 1023 a form that exists because 
intentional or not, the FBI acknowledged it, in which this whistleblower said that it contained information about Joe Biden's corruption, but that the FBI will not release it. And Comer said they don't even have to release it, just tell us what's in it. Because the FBI says it needs to protect its sources and methods. I guess from we the people who want to know about our president. Isn't this amazing? That the president's White House lawyer today in defense of his man says they haven't linked to any actual crimes. They haven't linked to any actual crimes. We want Joe Biden to explain all this activity. We want ex- Joe Biden to explain while he's referenced in emails on the laptop as the big guy who gets 10, 10%. And that is confirmed by Tony Bobolinsky. We've got a lot of questions for our, our man in the White House about meetings that he had with foreign leaders. We do. But the question is whether we're going to be able to find out in time or at all. When you have corrupt news organizations like MSNBC, and when you have frauds and phonies like Scarborough, like Nicole Wallace, like Lawrence O'Donnell, like Rachel Maddow, like the other Cretans over there. When you have Democrat operatives, like Jake Tapper and God knows who, it's going to be tough to get to the bottom of this. That's why the New York Post was not allowed in a, a presser yesterday. Because they, they actually are inquiring about things. And this is why I'm furious with Republican prosecutors all across the country. This is why I continue to ask, where the hell are you? Are you looking into anything? Not that anything and everything will will be a state or local issue, but shouldn't you look? I'm not asking you to be Alvin Bragg in terms of bringing a phony case, but I am asking you to be Alvin Bragg in terms of looking. I'm not asking you to be Letitia James, who is a a hideous left-wing goon. I'm asking you to be as aggressive as Letitia James. I'm trying to see if there's anything really that that you can find on the books. And again, I will repeat, you prosecutors at the Department of Justice who've decided to make a career out of what you do, who've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution. Aren't you embarrassed? Aren't you embarrassed at what triggers a Trump investigation and what does not trigger a Joe Biden investigation? Aren't you embarrassed by your political leadership starting at the top and especially your deputy, who you know are radical left-wing lunatics, the head of the criminal division, the head of the civil rights division? Absolute bomb-throwing leftists? Does it not concern you? Isn't it time to step up? With a whistleblower from the Eternal Revenue Service. A whistleblower who is a senior careerist in the Criminal Investigations Unit. who is getting cleared, according to reports, so he or she can come forward in full, who wants to explain that the political forces that be at the Internal Revenue Service are obstructing the investigation of Hunter Biden. Now, we've had whistleblower before who went after Donald Trump 
including some colonel, Vinman, I, I seem to recall his name was, that jackass. And then we had one whose name we dare not utter. Remember that one? The press said, no, we can't mention the guy. Why? Well, because he might be threatened. Wait a minute. People have a right to know who are making allegations against them. No, 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 you don't understand. Paul Sperry over at Real Clear Politics, or rather Real Clear Investigations, he found out the guy's name, and I don't remember it right now, it doesn't matter. And he published it, and we mentioned it repeatedly. Even so, the order came down from the New York Times and the Washington Post, from CNN and MSNBC, NBC, ABC, and CBS, the rest of the corrupt Democrat Party media. Do not mention the guy's name. Doesn't matter if it's out there now, thanks to Sperry. And, of course, I made it national. But no. And you were not allowed to mention his name. In fact, Republicans on the Hill were not allowed to mention the name. In fact, word went out for Mitch McConnell. Ugh. Don't mention the guy's name there. Shut up, Mitch, you idiot. Word went out. Don't mention his name. Eric something or other. And now we're not even to believe whistleblowers. Whistleblowers who blow whistles against Republicans are heroic. They get the Joe Scarborough seal of approval. But whistleblowers who expose Democrats, no, no. Mika Brzezinski, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Aren't you troubled that Tara Reid never had her day in court? Aren't you concerned that your buddy Joe Biden, who invited you and the big dummy to a state dinner, molested a woman who never had her day in court? Does it not bother you, Mika, and the big dummy next to you? That you're fans of Joe Biden, you went to a state dinner, even though he likes to smell the hair of little girls. Does that not bother you? Even though eight women, eight women came forward, gave their names that Joe kind of inappropriately touched them and gave them the creeps. Does that bother you, Mika? And the big dummy next to you? No, 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 not really. He's Democrat. You know, everything's great. And there we have. Oh, well, let me do it this way. George Conway. I want you to call in the program and tell me one piece of evidence, just one, that existed in that trial against Trump in Manhattan yesterday where they came out with their findings. Just one. You advised the woman to sue on defamation. I got it. I asked you one piece of evidence of rape, of rape. And here's George's problem, and here is Mr. Tough Guy Hindenburg's problem. There's none. There's no evidence of rape. Not even a sliver. Well, the jury... I didn't ask you that. Forget about the jury. Forget about the courtroom. Forget about the whole thing. Just tell me one sliver of evidence. Well, you know, Mark, a lot of these cases, there isn't ever. Oh, really? If in a lot of these cases, there's no evidence whatsoever. This jury did not believe the plaintiff was raped. Because they didn't come down with a finding of rape. That's what she alleged. She didn't allege sexual battery. She alleged rape. The jury didn't believe her when she alleged rape, and the jury didn't believe her two, I don't know, the two individuals who testified who said that she told them at the time that she was raped. The jury didn't believe the three of them. So the jury came up with sexual battery.
but she accused him of rape. But they came up with sexual battery. As I asked the attorney last night, how do you do that? He said, you don't. You know, it's a civil case, not a criminal case, not a lesser included, included crime. It's not a lesser inc- included crime situation. Somebody should ask the legal analysts on cable TV, how is that possible? It's not. They put that Access Hollywood tape in there, which had nothing to do with anything. They had two other people testify who said that Trump had done something to them. Uh, Their situations couldn't be verified. And you can't hold many trials on witnesses or supposed witnesses or whatever they were. I don't know what they were. There's no time for that sort of thing. So their testimony should never have been allowed either. Well, you know, under the law, it's for... I know, but you have a constitutional right to due process. I don't care what law they signed. That's why I'm a constitutional lawyer. You have a constitutional right to due process. That trumps everything. And you can't have due process when a when an Obama-appointed judge or a Clinton-appointed judge, I suppose, is allowing in information that's not supposed to be in. That's why we have rules of evidence. I'm just making the point. George Conway, you're welcome to call in and tell us what was the evidence. Just one piece of it. Just one piece. That's all. One little shred. Hindenburg Christie, you're welcome to call in too. Apparently you haven't been asked this question by other hosts. I have a question, Mr. U.S. Attorney. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Marco Rubio says that there is 100,000 foreigners on our border ready to come in. Starting tomorrow. And there's 500,000 more right behind them working their way through South and Central America, according to various services reporting to us from Colombia, Costa Rica, and Panama. Word is also out that the Biden administration has ordered the Border Patrol to let as many people through as possible. In other words, these phony processings. Give them a date to show up in front of an administrative law judge. That's backed up about five years. And over 90% of the people, over 95%, don't show up. So this is the game Biden's playing. So by the time he's done even one term, I want you to think about this. We could well have 10 million more people in this country, maybe 12 million more people in this country than when he started out as president. And this is why you should be completely repulsed and disgusted with the Chris Christie's, the Asa Hutchison's, your Chris Sununu's, people like Carl Rove, others, the Paul Ryan's, and others who keep trashing Trump, keep trashing DeSantis, keep trashing people that have a shot at the presidency, because none of them do, and the people they support don't, you should be disgusted by all of them. Because can you imagine if we manage to muscle our way through four years of this? What will happen if there's eight years of this? Eight years! We won't survive it. We will not survive it. I'll be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. So here's my question, America. 
This Congressman George Santos was arrested, taken into custody, 13 federal charges. Boy, he must have done something horrific, right, Mr. Producer? 13 federal charges. Didn't the guy just get elected? Isn't he a freshman? Didn't he just get elected in November? Got sworn in in January? So in four months' time, the Department of Justice developed a case against him with 13 charges. In five years, they haven't developed a case against Hunter Biden. And they see no reason to investigate Joe Biden. Don't, doesn't that strike you, America, as to what the problem is right now? Doesn't that strike you? And there's been more reporting on any network that doesn't call itself Fox or Newsmax or OAN on George Soros than what the findings were from the Republican House Oversight Committee on the Biden family. Do you find this amazing? I do. I find it repulsive. Kamala Harris was at a swearing-in today for the commissioners for the White House initiative on advancing educational equity, excellence, and economic opportunity for Hispanics. I want you to listen to her about equality versus equity. Cut 17, go. You know, so many of us have come from movements that were about the fight for equality. We also understand there's a difference oh, between... Oh, you are not involved in any movement to fight for equality. Don't make me bring Willie on the show. You didn't fight for equality. You fought for yourself. And you didn't even fight that hard. Go ahead. Equity. Equity is everyone deserves to have, right? And be treated equal. But equity understands that not everybody starts out on the same base. So if you're giving everybody an equal amount, but they're starting out on different bases, are they really going to have the opportunity to compete and achieve? That's why we purposefully, as an administration, the president, myself, the secretary, and, and everyone in our administration, are so dedicated to a specific principle, which is that of equity. There you go. Marxism. Since everybody's not the same, since everybody cannot be the same, even if you came out of the same environment, even if you came out of the same family, you didn't start out the same way. Because you're a unique human being. Well then, the government has to fix that. And I'm trying to make this point. She just defined, in very crude terms, Marxism. We have to make sure that those who started out in what we believe to be less fortunate ways wind up equal with, with those who found out who started out in better fortunate ways, if you will. More fortunate ways. Is that the role of government? Is that why we had a revolutionary war? Is that what the founders had in mind? Is that what the Constitution says? That says basically, look, you're free to do whatever you want with your life. Certainly now, that all the impediments have been removed that were there from the past. You're a free human being. You're in the freest country on the face of the earth. You want to accomplish something, go ahead. What are we going to do with all these immigrants coming into the country if she's right and I'm wrong? Since they obviously started out in places like Guatemala, 
China, Cambodia, wherever. The fact that we're in the United States, all of us, however we got here, is a step up on everyone else on the planet. But listen to what she says. And then I want you to listen to what Anna Navarro says, who is a disgusting demagogue, a grifter who's figured out how to make money, like Nicole Wallace, like Adam Kingsinger. Like Joe Scarborough. You see, the guy who was caught murdering people at the mall in Texas, who was actually shot dead himself, he wasn't white, he was Hispanic. But all the race baiters on TV and elsewhere were calling him a white supremacist. He had I believe a swastika on his body and things of that sort. So he was a neo-Nazi. Which by definition means, right, he must have been white because only white people are neo-Nazis. But it's not true. Cut 18, go. We all have to remember that the head of the Proud Boys, his name is Enrique Tarrio. The Proud Boys is a white nationalist group. Look, being Hispanic or being black does not, or being anything, does not make you immune from being racist, from being radicalized, from being a white supremacist, from being evil, from being homicidal. And we are seeing it over and over again. There are people, you know, they they don't see themselves as what they are. She's right in a sense, but she's not right about white supremacists. How can you be a non-white and be a white supremacist? Can you explain that to me, Mr. Producer? So you're arguing for the supremacy of a race that you're not? It's just, it's just, you have to be insane to make these arguments. Now, that's not to say that you can be something else by birth, by physical appearance and so forth and so on and be evil and uh, I, I got it and we've said that and that's true but when she goes the next step and says it's a white supremacist no it's not it's not even possible and if everybody's a white supremacist and you're teaching CRT and everybody is said to be a white supremacist if if they're white This is the problem. So anybody and everybody who's evil is white, even if they're not white. They got the game, it's fixed, you see. It's the way it works. I just point this stuff out, and she's uh, making a lot of money on The View, like all the other dunderheads are. Like Sonny Houston, who was disgusted when people raised questions about the verdict in New York about Trump. She seems to get orgasmic whenever Trump is charged or in this case when the jury came back. Maybe that's what's going on there, Mr. Producer. She seems to be obsessed with Trump. If I'm her husband, and I'm not, thankfully, I'd be very, very concerned about her and her views of Trump. Because whenever Trump has a problem, she seems to get very, very turned on. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. All right. I think there was one more I wanted us to play here. Uh, Let's see. All right, let's go to this. Let's go to Biden in Valhalla, New York today. Cut 21, go. According to estimates, the Republican bill would put 21 million people at risk of losing Medicaid, including 
two All right, let's, million- let, let, let's, how ridiculous is this? They don't even want to touch Medicaid. So let me tell you what he's doing and what a sleazeball this guy is. And he's always been a sleazeball. And the media know he's a sleazeball. The problem is they're sleazeballs too. What he's telling you is, is if there are cuts across the board, across the entire budget and and across the entire uh, government, that these cuts are going to come out of Medicaid, and that's not what they're proposing. They're proposing targeted cuts, including the 87,000 IRS agents. Biden won't budge on it including the monies that he puts in there for redistribution to college graduates from non-college graduates. And Biden says, no, I want that. They're saying the COVID money that wasn't spent should not be part of the base. Give it back to the taxpayers. Biden's saying, no, I want that part of the base. It's things like that that they're cutting. So he goes in there and he says, oh, they want to cut Medicaid and they want to cut law enforcement. Now, just use your noggins. Use your heads. Have you heard a single Republican say, I want to cut law enforcement? Name one. Just one. There are none. So he's trying to get out in front of this thing. Cut 22, please go. In fact, under the previous president, Republicans voted to avoid default three times. This yes, is not your yes, but there Republican. was a negotiation. Yes, but there was a negotiation. This is not your father's Republican Party. Really, Gramps? It's not your father's Democrat Party either. It's Vladimir Lenin's Democrat Party. You want to know the truth? Same stupid line that they get him to memorize. It's not, it's, it's not your father's Republican Party. What about my mother's Republican Party? Is Biden a member of FU yet, Mr. Producer? Mr. President, FU. Join FU, Fatties United. I'm the chairman. We will allow reprobates in. We don't discriminate, we believe in equity. And by the way, isn't that a joke? Equity. Equity. Did John Kerry start the same basis as other people? Equity. How about the big liberal Democrat Bill Gates? Equity. Warren Buffett? Equity. All these sleazy billionaires who fund the Democrat Party? Equity. Really? Equity. What a joke. How sickening. Go ahead. You know, here's what's happened if MAGA Republicans get their way. MAGA Republicans. How about MAGA Democrats? What if MAGA Democrats get their way? Told you this guy is a sleazeball and he is a street hack politician. Plagiarized his way through law school joined up immediately with the racist segregationists in the Senate at the age of 30. He wasn't just an observer when it came to opposing integration. He was a participant. In fact, he was a leader with the segregationists. Then he flips the script. In the 1990s, law and order is the big thing, so he becomes Mr. Law and Order and co-authors a bill. Then he runs away from the bill. When he decides to run for president, this, uh, uh, I made a mistake. Right? Then he blames everybody else for his failures. I mean, this man is not fit to be president even when he could think he was a moron. He's never been fit to be president. MAGA Republicans. We must start to call them MAGA Democrats. The American Republic. I'm here. Uh, <coughs> I'm here to defend democracy. How so? How so? All you care about is big government, taxes, borrowing. 
And then you go out and you lie to the American people on our dime, on Air Force One. And the Republicans, they want to cut Social Security. Shut up, you idiot. Put your teeth back in your head. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, the men and women, the freedom fighters in Ukraine and Taiwan, and you, the greatest audience of audiences. God bless you, and God be with you. I'll see you tomorrow.